right, we're back. Episode two of the Chase Diaries. This is about the 50th take on the intro. I don't know what's the matter with me. Um, before I start, me being me, always in a rush. So many things going through me. I've got to do this, got to do that. I've left the external mic at home. So I'm using the mic that's built into the camera. It's about as clear as talking through a plastic bag, but we'll make the best of it. So we're in the bumps, which is opposite the point where we fished in episode one. Um, I can't jump in the point because I'm fishing my own, on my own this weekend and one of the only rules pretty much down here at the chase is you can't jump in a double swim on a weekend if you're on your own. Through the week it's alright but other weekend you have to let the other, the parties of twos and threes jump in the double swims uh, which makes sense really, I think it's a pretty good rule. Uh, so like I say I'm in the bumps, the wind's hacking down here, it's due to um, swing a little bit, I think it will still be pushing down here so I'm stayed here. Um, I found a little silt gully about 15, 20 yards out in front of me. Similar feel to what I found last time where I had the two, three fish off. Um, so we're going with that. I've had a lead about. It seems to run from right to left all the way through. Um, it's about 10 foot scrape all the way through it smooth and then you hit the weed again. So it seems to be like a little channel in the weed. Um, so I'm gonna put a bait there. I'm gonna stick a bait on the island. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, about five foot off of it. Got a nice little donk down on that one and I've managed to get the left rod back on the spot where I took the 22 common from off the silver tree on the reed line. So that's the three spots. I'm about to mix a spot mix up um, and get some bait out on the three spots. I'm going to fill it in to be honest with you because uh, it's a low pressure weekend and I think of all the weekends that we've had recently, this weekend will be the weekend they get the nut down, get grabbing about. I come down Wednesday, um, trademark business really, just filled the place in 5k the old NEB Irish nut. Um, like I say, people say you can't uh, pre-bait a water like this because you can't guarantee getting on it. But if you can walk around a lake, put 10, 15 catapults out in each swim and you can come down to jump in a swim, then as far as I'm concerned, you've pre-baited an area. So that's what I did Wednesday. Come down, five kilo. Every other swim, just jumped in it, catapults, 10, 15, just spread it about the swim. Just so every swim had a bit of the bait in because like I said on the first, first episode, no one down is using the bait. Um, it's from it's from Newcastle. Jamie rolls it in North East Baits. Um, la the last episode was a bit of an experimental one, bringing a new bait into here. But for me, first time it coming in here and then switching onto it. I mean, three fish on a bank um, and lost two, so five takes on a brand new bait ain't bad. Um, I haven't been back since the last episode. I went to Southport Park the other weekend. Um, took that 26 ghostly out of there named Lily. Um, again on the North East Baits, so yet again new water, not seen the bait and again it worked for me. So we're on a good run, so hopefully we can keep it up. Um, so yeah, that's where we're at. So I'm going to uh, get busy now, get a spot mix made up and I'll, um, I'll start putting the bait out on the spot. I'm only going to stick the spot mix on the, uh, the gully, the middle rod spot. The other two I'm just going to put whole baits out um, because they're in the margins and I don't really want the coots diving down, diving down on a big bed of air, uh, bed of bait. Um, if they're going to pick up, they can pick the old baits up. I'd rather keep the spot mixing the 10 foot of water. So yeah, we'll, uh, we'll crack on and I'll um, catch up with you in a bit. Right, so literally all I've done, I've took a few handfuls of boilies, stuck them in, then took another 50, 60 baits, and I've chopped them in half. I've then took probably two to three handfuls of the old trout pellet, and I've stuck that in there as well, give that a good mix up. Then I've gone for the North East Baits Irish Nut Stick Mix. Another couple of handfuls of that. Mix it all together dry. I've then added the food sauce liquid of the Irish Nut. And I've also the black pepper slicker oil. Generous handfuls of that in there. Mixed it all together. And as you can see, the end result. A nice sticky, oily mix. And this is what I've been having the fish on lately.
Right, so we put the bait out on the spots. Um, just run you through the rigs quickly before we stick the rods out. Um, my right hand rod is going over to the island. Um, I've got some 18 mil white Irish nut pop-ups made from Jamie. Um, simple multi-rig, what I normally use. Size 8 choddy captor, 15 pound end trap, probably about an inch off the deck. Big blob of putty, um, like I said, 15 pound end trap all the way through, and the old trademark business at the top for the, uh, the kicker. The middle rod, um, it's going into some quite deep silt. I know it's deep from where I was fishing before. So I've gone on to a supple braid. This is the dark matter braid from um, Calder. It's quite long, probably about 10 inches. The NEB custom wafters as per. Um, like I say, I've took a nice shine to these baits. Um, they've served me well over the past couple of weeks. So we're gonna go out with that again. Um, that's on a size eight wide gape. Um, capture again, heat shrink kicker with a rig ring. I've got a little sinker and trademark business again. Like I say, it's quite long. So that lead can bed right in the silt. It ain't gonna make no odds. That'll just sit nicely. And my left arm rod, pretty similar. Again, size eight, um, wide gate, capter, heat shrink kicker. Same again with the custom dumbbells, 15 pound end trap. Tiny little bit of coating broke just out the kicker. Sinker halfway up, trademark business again. So as you can see, pretty much similar to the last session. Three fish on a bank, five takes. I'm not really going to change it unless it stops working. So we're going to get these rods out now, and um, I think that'll be it for the evening. I might redo them, depend on, on if the birds leave me alone or not. But uh, we'll, take, we'll play it by ear. There's a geezer on the right of the island in the bus stop swim, just landing one as we speak, so they're definitely down here. I've had fish nodding all out all over me. So we get these out, and we'll see what happens. rolling all over me. Um, I got took out by a duck on the right hand rod but I'll put it back on the same spot. They seem to have uh, done one now. My super broad is leaking like a trooper. I might as well be under the stars to be honest. Everything's soaked. But the rain's eased off. Um, the wind's dropped right off as well. To be honest I've checked the weather report and it looks like it's going to swing tomorrow. So maybe not the best decision jumping down here. But I've seen fish down here, so I know they're up. I know they like the bait, so we'll have to just sit on it and see what we can work out. But the pressure's meant to stay pretty low all weekend. I know the sun's due tomorrow, but yeah, like I say, left rod and the middle rod haven't had a beep on yet, but I've left them from when we put them out earlier. So we're just going to sit tight for tonight and. Um, Hopefully I'll catch you in the morning with one in a retainer, but if not, we'll have to reassess the situation. I don't think we're going to make a move because it will probably fill up tomorrow. Um, and I'm in a good swim, so we'll persevere and see what happens. But yeah, for the first night, second episode of Chase Diaries, from a soaking wet camp at the minute. 
I'll, um, I'll catch up with you in the morning. How about that for a wake up call in? Just got my nut down, 12 o'clock, rear the rod roars off. Got a lovely 27 and a half common in the net. Bad him in the sling for about half hour, so he might be a bit lively. Let's hold her up, show you the prize. How about that for a chase front pit common? A bit bigger than the one last week. 27 and a half. North East Bates custom dumbbell doing a business. I'm going to get the snaps done of this. I've got Luke on his way down now, so I'm going to sling her up for another 10 minutes. Get Luke here, do the photos, and we slip her back. Rod's already back out on the spot. What a pug of fish. Just short of the 30. But we're getting there, they're certainly getting bigger. Paga. photos done it was about one half one anyway time to put the fish back but um, yeah I was right the wind has swung this morning it's pumping down to um, Memorial now well I say pumping it's more of a gentle breeze but but um, yeah I'm happy we nick one on the first night I'm gonna um, probably give it till about half 10 11 reel the rods in redo the rods and I think I'm going to put another probably 10 15 spot loads out on the spot I'm going to move my right hand rod off the island and bring it onto that middle rod spot where I had the fish last night so I'll have two rods in the same spot and I'll keep the one going on the reeds but um, yeah that spot in the middle that's, big, that's big enough for about four rods five rods it's, it's like a big long silk gully so that's the plan of action. I have to finish my coffee that is. But um, yeah, all in all, other than getting soaked, it was, uh, it was a good night. So yeah, I'm gonna finish my coffee, wake myself up, and then uh, I'll crack on, get these rods sorted. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
So if anything does come over the spot, usually it slicks up. Um, it's been fizzing, it hasn't really been slicking, so it's making me wonder what's, what's down there. Haven't had any liners at all. Um, we did what we said earlier this morning, we put two rods on the same spot. Um, and again, 20, 25 spoms over the top. So I think I'm gonna give it till late evening, probably about six, seven o'clock. I'll, um, I'll redo the rods as they've been out all day and then uh, yeah we'll sit it out for the night most of the activity I've had in the sessions that I've done have been of a night either late evening early morning um, the fire fish that we had the last time that was pretty much from darkness until morning so I didn't really expect anything during the day the wind has continued to push right down the other end so could have pushed them out. Um, I haven't seen anything today, which is a little bit worrying. But you never know. Hopefully the uh, the bait will draw them in. There's just a tiny little slick then. Just come up on the spot. But yeah, we'll uh, we'll sit tight, get the kettle on, and um, I'll catch up with you later on tonight once we redo the rods.
Right, so we're coming into the evening now. It's about six o'clock. Everyone seems to be redoing their rods. Me, I'm gonna leave mine. Um, I've had no disturbance on the rods through the day. I know they touched down nice. I know they're on a clear spot as such. So yeah, I'm gonna be leaving me uh, my middle with me right. Well, I've redone the left one just to make sure that it's, it was definitely clear. Um, but yeah, pretty uneventful day. I haven't seen nothing. I've been watching the water most of the day. Um, I suppose it's a good thing. I haven't really seen them nutting out at the other end of the lake away from me. Um, like I said earlier, most of the action seems to be of an evening anyway, through the night and in early morning. So with a bit of luck, history repeats itself. We'll have a chunk on a bank through the night and I can uh, catch up with you in the morning with a nice fish in my hands. Up from the second episode, second night, Chase Diaries, Lee England Carp Fishing. I shall uh, catch up with you in the morning. To the last one. Um, didn't see nothing through the night. I haven't had any ink. I sat up for most of the evening till about three o'clock. Didn't see anything moving or showing anywhere. Um, left hand rod this morning. Quite a vicious drop back. Run out there. No shoes. No socks. Looks over at the spot before I pick the rod up, and there's a coat diving on the spot. So I left that one. It was about seven o'clock. Um, but yeah, it's been been pretty dead. I don't know whether the change in pressures going from quite a low pressure Friday, raining, overcast, to 22 degrees yesterday, um, pressure started to creep up again. And then again today we're, we're overcast again. Whether that's played a part in it, 
whether it was the three lads that set up in the point opposite me and spent the day spawning. Could have just scared the fish off out of the bay. When I had it to myself, it was quite quite low pressure. There was no, no, not really no rods out. I kept my rods out. So they had pretty much freedom to come into the bay, move around and then and do what they wanted. Whereas now there's there's three lads fishing off the point. So that's an extra six rods. Raise the pressure a bit. Who knows? That's fishing for you. But um, I've got quite a lot to do today, so I think I'm going to wrap it up here, have my coffee, and then uh, start to pack up. Otherwise, the, uh, the missus won't let me out next month. But um, yeah, if I have anything at last knockings, I'll flip the camera back on. But from episode two of the Chase Diaries, another successful trip. They're getting bigger. 27.8 next video is um, well there's two September we've got Burners All 24 acre res uh, me and Phil are down now for two nights so you've got that one and there'll obviously be a Chase Diaries for September as well so two videos next month but um, yeah thanks for watching hope you enjoyed it and uh, look out for the next one